And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Catacombs and Castles. Now, Catacombs is a game I really like, um, and it's a dexterity game. I'm, I'm looking at it because it's right off my screen. It is huge, fun, one verse all. When I first heard about this, I thought this was an expansion for Catacombs. You might think it's an expansion for Catacombs, but it's not. It's a completely different game that has a lot of similarities to Catacombs. uses the same basic system, but it's a much quicker game. It says 30 to 60 minutes. This is easily, many times, a 30-minute game. Team versus team, flicking game. I, there's not many of those out there, but the ones that are out there, I normally tend to like. What about this one? Let's take a look. So you're going to place the board here. You're going to have two teams on this. You have Team Catacomb versus Team Castle. You'll take turns putting these big wooden obstacles on the board, and then you're going to take turns picking your heroes. When you pick a hero, you're going to get their character card here. So this is Ransar, the Watch Commander. They come with a rules card that matches them. This shows how many hit points they have, their basic attacks, and the special cards they get. So he gets loose arrows and blow the horn. Although you have a couple generic cards that anybody on your team can use. So the castle hero here is Lara, who has send reinforcements and take down the leader. And then there's Delilah, the magical princess, and there's just a lot of different characters. Now, each of these characters has these special cards. These cards can only be charged up by attacking the opponents and doing damage to them. And you put the damage in a card, you can then use these abilities. Until then, you're stuck using your basic ability. Now, this is called a sequence here. So when you use your basic ability, and, and the rules of the game are very simple. One side will go against another side, and you'll use a hero. When you're done with a hero, you tap them a little bit to show that they've been used until each side has done all their heroes. When you do a, a use a hero, you just follow their sequence. So here, I can make a move, and then a longbow range attack, or I can make a melee attack. So to understand this, let's take a look at the board. So, so there's a lot of basic things in this game, and there's a reference chart in the back of the book that explains everything, but many times, many of the things you're doing is a rush. That's just basically a move. You just flick your thing, and that's how far you move. You can also make a melee attack, which is making a move and trying to hit someone else. So maybe this character will try to hit the other character with an attack. All right, so you can see they both moved. And at this point, you would do damage. A melee attack does one damage, so I would be forced to give one of my hit points to the person who hit me who has a chance to charge up one of their abilities. If you do a ranged attack, so let's say she was going to shoot with a longbow, you would put the token next to her and you would shoot that disc at an enemy, trying to hit them with that disc. That was a very, very poor shot there. And then the disc comes off the board. There's all sorts of discs. Each of them will do different things. You can see there's webs. And there's a freezing and fire, and each person's going to have different ones which might do different abilities when you hit them. There's also different sizes. You can see this little dagger here, oh, I just hit her <laughs> with that, is going to do different damage than maybe shooting with a longbow will. So that's essentially how the game is. These here are just for obstacles, you know. You're going to ricochet off them and bounce off the different obstacles. There's also a completely different side of the board, which is essentially the same thing, except this is Team Catacomb's side, and this time the Team Castle folks are attacking. It looks kind of like one of the throne rooms in Skyrim when you go in. That is not the only way to play, of course. There is all sorts of different characters in the game, and you can even, when you're picking, so here's the heroes for the, the Catacombs, and so this guy has chains, and he has special abilities, and the Vampire Princess, and the Assassin, who has a chance to fire a shuriken, move, and then, and he also has some special abilities here. Sometimes your special ability will let someone else on your team take it. This one lets someone else on your team move and then shoot a fireball. Sometimes they let everyone on your team do something. This guy, he moves, shoots a fireball, moves, I mean, sorry, melee attack, fireball, melee attack, fireball. It's a really powerful thing, but you need to hit your enemy twice before you use it. Each side also has like a major catacomb lord. That's this guy. So you can play instead of team versus team, 
One team will take the Catacomb Lord, who then also comes with some warriors. And they just have a bunch of attacks that they're going to do. And the heroes are trying to take them all on. It's kind of like one verse all. So when you play this, you can play two players and each person controls a bunch of the uh, castle heroes. Or you can play with you know teams and then you each take a different hero. I might want this robotic ranger. Um, or I might want the, you know, here's the good guy ch king champion with his guards. But essentially the game is just simply taking discs and flicking them at each other. So the game comes with these walls. They're quite big. They go all the way around the board and they're there to block things. I really like these. This is something that they've used in all their games so far. The wooden blocks themselves are big and chunky and the discs slide off them really neatly. In fact, the discs are good. Now, be warned, you're gonna be putting a good chunk of stickers on at the beginning when you first get it, putting them on these discs and doing things. But the discs slide well on the board and they bounce off these obstacles really well. I've always been a huge fan of the artwork for this game, uh, just how well it looks, uh, the, the card quality themselves. Now, for a while you might have trouble figuring out what all the symbols are here, but this game is not that complex. So like this one here, the, the, the rush, everyone after a while knows that that means movement. It doesn't do damage, but it lets you move around. And the melee one's pretty easy. And then that one there is ice. And so when you hit somebody with ice, something will happen. Or she also has the net, where she'll put a net token on top of somebody. The game also comes, and I didn't mention these in the overview, but I should, comes with armor tokens. And these are tokens you can use when you get hit. You can like just block an attack. And then the second time you get hit, the armor token will come off. You can choose to use those or not. It also comes with a little one inch marker for you know when you're trying to figure out if someone's within one inch to use a special ability with them and then there's just a pile of hit point tokens overall though there's not a lot of pieces in the game and like i said this reference chart on the back of the book is really invaluable it tells you what to do the game itself has a very nice rule book and explains a tutorial where they actually explain you know go through a sample game which you would think it's not very possible for a dexterity game, but it really helped explain the rules and I thought it was very handy to go through and understand how to play the game. And then the boss mode, which is the one leader against the others, and it shows all the components. I was just very, very pleased with how the whole thing works and how it looks. Good production. Okay, so that is Catacombs and Castles. Now, how does it compare to Catacombs? If you've not played Catacombs before, Catacombs is a very similar system to this, where it's all versus one, one person, and they're going through different levels of a dungeon. It's a game I really enjoy a lot. It's on my shelves for that reason. I like Catacombs, but this game provides me with a nice alternative to Catacombs. So the point, I'm going to keep this one, because if I want to play just a quick dexterity game, team versus team, shooting around a table, shooting fireballs at each other, this one's really fast. It also lets you do some power-ups and shoot, but there's not that difficult you know there's not that level of oh if you are playing and you're playing just one character okay so you're playing team versus team i'm playing one character i have to remember my main ability and two powers that i can power up that's it there's nothing else you just do that you shoot against other people there's the fun and the thrill of the shooting the the discs around the board and seeing them bounce off the obstacles the obstacles are great by the way i like having them there so they also keep the game different each time and it's you know, you're working together as a team, so there's that skill of the shots, plus the cool special abilities. And the characters all feel pretty balanced, they all have different things, and there's a lot of laughing and yelling. And at its heart, it's just a silly dexterity game, but it actually feels like a fighting game. And that's the that's what Catacombs did, and that's what this game does also. When someone shoots an arrow, they, they feel differentiated from the person who gets to attack twice. Right, that, and the person who shoots a fireball, it feels like a, a, a fireball was shot. And it's weird to take like a tactical miniatures game, and brew it down to catacombs and castles, but this one does a great job. Now it says 14 plus on the box, which I'm sure they had to do for some legality reasons, but uh, it, it is a game that kids can easily play and have a fun time with. And it goes up to eight people, which is great. The whole team versus team aspect. So love the artwork. I love the components. I wonder if this one might get even more play for me than Catacombs because Catacombs is a big grandiose game and it's, it could be 90 minutes, you know, going through a dungeon while this one is quick to set up. You set it up, boom, 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 pick your characters. Here you go, what is your characters? Let's go. Turn, 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 turn. The speed of which the turns go is nice and fast. There's not a lot of 
hmm, what do I do next? This takes dexterity games to the next level because it adds a whole bunch of theme to a dexterity game, but it also takes a thematic game and brings it down to simplicity so you go back and forth. Um, the game it most reminds me of, honestly, is Flick 'em Up, right? Flick 'em Up is a Western game where they're shooting back and forth um, at each other. This has that same feel but with fantasy settings. Certainly one I'd recommend. If you have a group of people who like to get together and shoot discs all around the table, I, this is this is one of the best you can get for sure. That's Catacombs and Castles. Get it. Dice Tower of Judgment. Excellent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Shut the door. <laughs> Boom. Mm -hmm.